they're still training, they're still putting in the effort, they're still working hard. Um, all I'm trying, I'm just putting the pieces in place to just support that activity. And it takes a lot of support to pedal hundreds of miles across our state. Everyone knows that rag dry is fun. It's also tough. Training your body for the heat and the hills will help you survive. Training your mind also helps. Some athletes have mastered more than just a bike ride with their brains, and their spirit shows what's possible. As soon as the last person the team checks in with them, they're going to move on to the next town. I grew up in a household with a blind father. My dad was 100% blind as a result of type 1 diabetes. When you grow up like Mike Boone. I saw him on a daily basis, how he, how he interacted with his job, how he interacted with life, you know, the barriers he had to face. Riding hundreds of miles on a bike doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Obviously, I looked up to him because he was my dad. And, you know, he, he, he did the best that he could with, with the circumstances. And if Mike's dad could see him now, he'd be proud. It's the first ever adaptive rag bright team. We've got uh, a team of 24 people comprised of 10 hand cyclists, a visually impaired rider. Mike isn't just helping these people ride for a week. I don't want you guys to even mess with that. He's launched an entire organization dedicated to creating sports and recreation opportunities for the physically disabled. You could say Mike's job is to help people play. Yeah, yeah totally. I'm totally tapping all the way. <laughs> For Ty Bloss, I was born prematurely and I weighed one pound, nine ounces, and I wasn't expected to survive that. Doing rag bry is new. My retinas were underdeveloped and that's what caused my blindness. But not extraordinary. It's not really amazing that I've been able to do it as a blind person, but just that I'm able to be living and be appreciative of that ability. She grew up with teachers who asked why she was even in school. Others questioned her ability to participate in sports. Ty viewed every encounter as a chance to prove them wrong. I'm a strong believer that a disability is purely a characteristic and so it shouldn't be what identifies you as a person. I love everything that anybody else would be doing as a person of any age really. Anything that you could be interested in, a blind person has done it. Um, I love rock climbing, I love downhill skiing, I love anything that gets me outside. You ready? Yep. Okay, let's start pedaling. Eric Kinman is one of Ty's partners on the ride. I was scared to death. I mean, I didn't want somebody who's over, overcome probably many obstacles in life to get on a bike with me and then find that I'm the obstacle. These two met through Adaptive Sports Iowa as runners. For Eric, it was eye-opening. He was floored to find out how someone who lives in total darkness views the world. I learned that Ty has an affinity for pink and she has uh, strong opinions about color, which it took me a few minutes to realize that that was not normal in my mind as I process things. I mean, she reads in her own way, she sees movies in her own way, and she experiences things um, how she experiences them, and they're very similar to what I experience. I can see how she, in her life she's found ways to just um, enjoy things that I enjoy every day in her own way. Eric learned a lot about Ty and a lot about himself. And it's somewhat challenging in a way because it shifts how athletes typically think. Because it's not, I mean, when you're involved with adaptive sports, it, it no longer becomes about you, but becomes about the people that you're with. Um, and I think that's just probably a healthier way of living in many respects. Morning. Vern Willey has always been an avid cyclist. Broke my back like 14 years ago. His life changed when he crashed. That was in June of 97. But he didn't let the crash change him. I guess my attitude more was, hurry up, let's get me out of here so I can get back to work and do what I need to do and, and go from there. When I got out of the hospital, then I ordered, well, I got a few of them, but this was my first hand cycle I ordered. and and got it and started riding again in September. And in the past 14 years, Vern and his wife have done long distance rides all over the country. This, compared to what I did before, I, gee, I don't know, I'd say I do 150% or if not more exertion compared to when it was my legs. It's why he's a supporter of what Mike's doing. I think it's a great thing. They have this association in a lot of other states and I, I actually go to um, Colorado and ski in the winter time through an adaptive sports association. It's kind of a support group because um, even after getting out of the hospital, it's how do you do the sports and do something other than just sit in a wheelchair. Are right, you guys heading out? 
All right. See you over in Madrid. Mike's dad showed him that a physical disability doesn't define a person, that the body doesn't have to be a prison, and that obstacles can always be overcome. Right above my desk, I've got a picture of my dad and me um, when I would, you know, back when I was younger. And I, that's a little motivation to me every single day. Like, that's, that's the reason I go to work. It's the reason his work looks like play. Because when you follow your passion, they're one and the same. <laughs> Mike's dad died in 1991. He never really got to see the changes brought about by the Americans with Disabilities Act, much less sports and recreation programs like these. If you want to learn more about Adaptive Sports Iowa, we've put a link to their website on our website, whotv.com. It's right there under the As Seen on 13 tab. ASA also has a Facebook page. Mike's been really good about doing updates mm -hmm. this week, so you can keep tabs on the group, and you can join the fun if you want because they want volunteers too. And they're 24 strong. Oh yeah, it's, I mean, it's an amazing group, just amazing yeah. people. Um, Ty was moving from Des Moines to Iowa City. When we did that training ride with them, I said, yeah. what are you moving to Iowa City for? She says, oh, I'm starting law school. <laughs> Why not? You oh, know, not? I mean, Absolutely. you go, girl. That is That's great. terrific report. Oh, no barriers in there. No. Mm -hmm. I love it. Tonight, we have some pictures for you from Ragbri of today. This is Bondurant. The daycare kids got out to give high fives to their heroes on two wheels. That's pretty cool. And Team Spam was hydrating. Look at the Spam can on top of his helmet. I'm afraid that that <laughs> might have blown up in the heat today. Uh, we are going to see 75 degrees for the start tomorrow morning. It is going to be another warm day, but thunderstorms are starting to develop, and we will have more of those tomorrow as well.